would you just look at that view? This is one heck of a location for a, a, a frame by frame episode, wouldn't you say? Just, excuse me, a second. What, what are you up to over there? Oh, it's a damn fine cup of coffee. And hot. Hot? Hot. Hot coffee. Yeah. Have you seen those trees out there? What kind what? of trees are they? Oh, Douglas firs. Douglas firs? Wow. Big, tall, majestic. Look at those Douglas firs. Wow. You talking to me? Did you have a brain tumor for breakfast? Well, who the hell else are you talking to? Talking to me? No funny how. I mean, funny like I'm clowning. I'm Peter Binkley. We all go a little mad sometimes. Apparently, it doesn't spend time in this time. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Hello, Andy. Hello, Stephen. How are you? I'm I'm good. Actually, I'm uh, not great because wow. I um, had the misfortune since our last talk of watching the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles film. Did you? Yes. The new one? Yes, the new one, the Michael Bay produced one. Why did you do that? Um, Why? What possessed you? Stepson was around. He wanted to watch it. I thought, uh -huh. um, yeah, he wasn't into watching Interstellar. He wanted to watch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, so we watched that. Fair enough. Yeah. And Ooh. and how was it? Ooh, it's Right, it's not as bad as everyone makes, makes it out, it out be. because some of the dialogue between the turtles is quite snappy and it's quite funny but because it's not as bad as everyone makes it out to be it's sort of worse because of that if because you get you, what I mean you like it to be bad so that it's I wanted good. it to be worse than it was it's not yeah. great it is terrible yeah. but it's not as bad as everyone would lead you to believe can you speak to Diane? oh yeah Hello Diane, I have just arrived at a very luxurious hotel in the middle of the southwest. I do not appreciate their towels, they're a little bit pink. Um, but their coffee is damn fine. Okay. And what about that cherry pie? Oh my gosh, enough of the cherry pie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. This is really, really bad. Okay. So, really, um, where's, all, where's all this coming from? What's, what's, well, what's this week we decided we were going to talk about Twin Peaks Fire Walk with me. The, Twin uh, Peaks, the series? No, Twin Peaks Fire Walk with me, the film. There's a film? There is a film. Did you watch it? Yeah, I thought that was what I watched. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, which um, tells the week. Obviously, Twin Peaks starts based on they find Laura Palmer's body. The FBI drafted in. That's kind of what the film, the series is about. The oh, film. Come on, spoilers. Oh come on, everyone see it. It was now. back in 1990. So yeah. yeah, I think we're all right. So obviously, the film deals with the week leading up to the death of Laura Palmer. Right, just that one week before. Mm. So there's lots of mileage left. Two-hour film. Yes. Mm. Lots of things going on. Yes. Yeah. I I almost I almost feel um, that next one we do should be a film I really don't like because this is one of my favorite films. I think. This is one of your favorite. Films. Yeah. Well, we could do that. I'm, I'm pretty sure that we can we can watch the room and Birdemic next time. Yeah, I think we should yeah, do that. But, uh, <laughs> so yeah, but, but Firewalk with me. It's not a well known film. Not a lot of people. I, I haven't heard people talk about this in this country, at least. Maybe it's bigger. No, than I, yeah, I think um, you get a lot of film websites who do every now and again a sort of. It's a film to do a nice retrospective look at. Yeah, I think because of how universally panned it was when it first came out nobody liked it and probably I think most, actually yeah. I don't think I think some critics did get it but not many yeah because it was David Lynch sometimes people had a certain sense of enigma about it because it was you know usually his films are saying something that's that's not necessarily on the surface and they want to make mm. sure that they don't miss it you know so yeah and obviously this technically it's brilliant but yeah absolutely yeah. I think the series was it's funny Yes. You know, and it's quirky and um, not I don't, obvious. No, funny. no, no, not obvious funny. And it's still got 
the Lynchian elements in it. Yes. You know those Lynchian elements. What are those Lynchian elements? What What does Lynch do that no other director does? I think um, the bizarre. Would you say? Yeah, definitely. Obviously, you know, you've got the um, the man from another place. I think he's he's called in the uh, red room on the couch. Yeah, yeah. Who talks backwards yet forwards? Who actually did that? Didn't he? He learned everything. Backwards. He learned everything backwards. That's impressive. Yeah, he probably he's got because people have that gift. To be yeah, able to just yeah. do it, and he just his brain works in that way where he can just say anything backwards. But in contrast to the series, the film is very dark. Yeah, and I think I was realizing that last night because I was trying to watch it with with my wife, and she's not a big fan of dark things. So I kept telling me to turn the, the the monitor around a little bit and say, "Ah, you don't want to see this." <laughs> and then, yeah. <laughs> so obviously, the, the first shot in the film is that bat hitting the TV. Yes, that's quite symbolic, isn't it? Yeah, that's been that's been touched upon um, as as being a reference to smashing the TV. This is not the TV show. Yeah, this is whatever you think this is going to be. This is not what this film is going to be. Yeah, it's not as straightforward. I mean, and David Lynch is never a straightforward thing. I think he's the kind of guy who will take a scene that's that's just a normal uh, exchange between two people, and it will just work on it and work on it and work on it until there's something that isn't hasn't been done before yeah we'll take like his first feature Eraserhead on the surface it's just about a failed marriage and a guy trying to deal with his kid yeah pretty That's much that's all it's about but it's just dealt with in such dense visuals and yeah and an inability to relate to in-laws yeah absolutely there's that element too um, so yeah, very deep, very thick, but he's very. He's an sticks, artist. He sticks to it. Yeah, and uh, it's not as you never go into a, a David Lynch film feeling as though that halfway through or towards the end everything just becomes flat. He's consistent. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I, and and I, I probably find that he's probably the most consistent, but yet less derivative. Uh, other directors kind of have their tropes. They have their certain th- things that they do. Constantly, I mean, yeah, he has his references to suburbia in a lot of his films, um, mm. how things are all pretty and nice. Yeah, but the underbelly of that is, yeah. I think, it's very different. Again, the great, we, I'm going to start referencing all these films now. But which ones are they? You got the shot in Blue Velvet, haven't you? Where you see um, the white yes. picket fence and the, that guy in the fire engine go past with a smile, waving at the kids. Which was it, actually an influence of the TV series Picket Fences. Yeah, after, yeah, big influence. And then the camera goes down, it goes into the soil, and you just see all the worms, yeah. and, all, and it's all dirty, and it's, you know. Exactly, exactly. And the that's, dirtiness, yeah. the underbelly of suburbia. So you could safely say that Twin Peaks <coughs> is, and David Lynch himself have heavily influenced the film industry, especially. Um, so why was Firewalk with me so. Because it was. I, well, I think part of it is it, it's not like the TV show at all you know which why would it be the the seven days leading up to Laura Palmer's death would not have been a happy time anyway oh yeah so it's not going to be a comedy is it you know even though it has got its comedic elements in the film oh yeah but they're, they're more kind of yeah they're yeah. still abstract still abstract and yeah. still yeah kind of a less kind of way I mean he has that woman in red yeah the airplane and uh, is he, that David Duchovny it looks like David Duchovny do you know what? I never actually connected the dots, but because um, in series two, David Duchovny does play a transvestite. Yeah, he does. Because um, she'll be the woman in red. Yeah. I just, I just love the names that he has for his characters, like Lil the dancer. I think that's the one. Uh, Kimberly Ann Cole. Cole. There yeah, you go. It's not David Duchovny then. But uh, Jack edited that out. <laughs> Jack, yeah. Giggling secretary, old guy at Haps, curious woman, jumping man, fat trout neighbor. Jumping Man, The Electrician, Mr. Treadman's Grandson, Second Woodman, Heidi. I mean, it's just, just, yeah, Heidi's probably not as unusual. But. Well, you've obviously you've said to me earlier that you think people were fed up with Twin Peaks as well. Um, I thought that well, that was alluded to during the uh, the Camo, um Uncut piece, yeah. that he kind of said that maybe that they were a little bit... Um, but it was, because the thing is about the series is that you either like it or you don't I think mm. people will either gravitate towards it or they won't well I know in series 2 the um, the studio uh, made them 
say who killed Laura Palmer. Uh, pretty early on. Pretty early on. Earlier than Lynch and Mark Frost wanted, wanted to. to. Yeah, yeah. So do you think that kind of spoiled spoiled it? Do you want it to drag out a lot longer? That could be it. <clears throat> and that's probably why, I guess, it, when, when you get studio interference, it does get in the way of the vision. And again, that doesn't work with Lynch. Why did why does Lynch, a, a, a guy who who at at that time had done so much, why did he have the interference from studio? Is it simply because he was on a television network instead of a film? The film is different. Yeah, after I do, Dune, I don't think he would actually care for anybody interfering with his stuff. Yeah, absolutely. But I suppose once the first series was so popular, yeah, and you know it made Cal McLaughlin a household name, you know that kind of thing. The studio then want to get involved with it because it's been so popular if it had just been if it had just made its money back and it was like a cult hit and people were into it but it, it could have gone on longer if they'd have just left it alone well they still obviously... was going to make money for them yeah who knows what goes on exactly in the minds of uh, these fat cigar smoking idiots <laughs> yeah uh, fat cigar smoking idiot I think he was also in this movie oh no Gregory Smokey no this is the guy in the roadhouse <laughs> One thing we can say for certain that Firewalk with me is absolutely David Lynch's vision. Now he took control there. Yeah, absolutely. He took control. He took it dark. The other thing about that is, is that because it's a film, he can take it darker. Yeah. He can go places that the TV series couldn't because of censorship and because of certain things. Mm. Um, so. I, I, I just want to talk a little bit about Cheryl Lee's performance in the film. Yes. I think it's one of the all-time great female performances ever that's saying something i that's i i will stand by that yeah, i truly I, believe that and she I'm is happy with astounding that. in this film and uh, it makes me wonder she was she under underused in twin peaks i know she was dead in the, in the very first <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but she, come back, she as came a, back as a uh, the cousin was a cousin yeah. yeah she hasn't really done that much since has she no. i know she was into john carpenter's vampires she turned up in that um, I know she has she's worked consistently, but how I, maybe it's gone because no no one got on board with the film, but that, that's Oscar worthy performance in that film. It's it just of a, a, a you know a girl falling apart. You know, she finds out in it that you know obviously Bob is the the bad guy in this. Who and yeah, uh, you find know. out within the film that basically Bob's been raping Laura Palmer since she was about seven I think she says and for some very young anyway it becomes revealed that Bob turns out to be Leyland yeah, yeah which is her dad yes of course and oh that, that <laughs> it blows it all apart doesn't it um, it does yeah and, and, and the and fact that he was actually possessed by Bob and Bob is actually the demon spirit yeah but yeah it's Bob's a, a spirit yeah because at the, at the end of um, the Twin Peaks series 2 Bob was possessed uh, Cooper Agent Cooper yeah that's how that's ended so Fire Walk With Me is pretty much now you, you said to me before that Fire Walk With Me was actually if it was successful they were going to make other films yeah they but that were gonna, didn't happen no because it wasn't successful it wasn't successful um, but there is hope yeah, there was always some. 2006. 16, yeah. 2006? Yeah, it was already been done. It's great. Well, they're only releasing it in 2016. Oh, yeah, yeah, just, just in case. E flat. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we're going to have. Um, interesting times ahead. Interesting yeah. times, yeah. We're, we're going to get back to Twin Peaks in How 2016. Many was it four? Is that all? Maybe six. Is that all? Yeah, I don't think they're doing a great deal. They're doing a mini series. Yeah, so. a mini series. Maybe that's okay. Maybe maybe we shouldn't be too greedy. No. Yeah, but Cheryl Lee signed on. Good. Kyle McLaughlin signed on. Well, it wouldn't be Twin Peaks without those two. Well, going back to the film, he really didn't want to do the film. Really? Because he was so scared of being typecast as, as Cooper. Dale Cooper, yeah. And that um, he had a much larger role in the actual film. But um, as it turns out, you know, they, they convinced him to come back, but just have a, a lot smaller role. I don't think he had anything to worry about. I mean, he's uh, yeah, yeah, he's not gone without work, has he? <laughs> he's I done quite well. I mean, he he was in Sex and the City for quite a while as well. I mean, yeah, that's another uh, another show that, that that I remember him being in. And I, 
vague, I vaguely actually remember seeing him in Showgirls. Oh, was he in that? Yeah, he was. Showgirls. That back in 1995, wasn't it? That was after Firewalk with me. Yeah, yeah. If he was worried about killing his career with Firewalk with me, what the hell was he thinking with Showgirls? Paul Verhoeven, Paul Verhoeven, yeah. yeah, you think, well, I've got Can't him, go I'm, in, I'm in safe hands here. Yeah, I mean, that's slightly different than David Lynch. No, yeah. Not that much. Well, there's, there's, both there's, renegade directors who try, uh, actually reach in for some sort of artistic. artistic yeah. Uh, I suppose there's boobs in Firewalk with me as well. There are, but there weren't any in the TV series because they couldn't get past the censors yeah. in America. They would have. Do you think they had a meeting while they're doing a series? Lynch drinking some coffee. And can I, I think we should have, have some boobs. <laughs> can I order some boobs to go? <laughs> Not attached to a person, just a pair of boobs. In the car, that somewhere. would have been that probably would have been in style, but uh, unfortunately, back in those days, we 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 were very uh, um, you know, I think television now would have been fine with it, and they yeah. probably you probably will be able to go, I think you'll be able to go darker in the new series. Well, yeah, when well, you look at the, some of the series that are out now, it does no what limit how about? dark you can go. I'm surprised he hasn't done that earlier. I mean, I'm surprised that he hasn't gone with his gut and thought well you know there, there are other TV series is there? I he's think only he, ever done yeah. Twin Peaks on TV he has but I think Lynch has spoken that TV now is the, it's a, a good medium for artists yeah. more so than film I think than it was before Yeah, and I guess it's taken a while for that to mature yeah but now yeah. you've got like you got American Horror Story which is very graphic and full of boobs and, you know you've got uh, Games of Thrones Games of Thrones and very got, dramatic Full of boobs. Yeah, orange yeah. is the new black. Full of lesbian <laughs> uh, boobs. Yeah, well, that, you see, in prison. And that, that's the unusual thing is that now, I mean, when we were kids, I mean, we we're like ten year ten years old, we had no access to any of this kind of stuff. It, it was all very um, watered down stuff. Yeah, Twin Peaks wasn't that watered down. I mean, there was a lot of stuff in there that that was off limits I should say you know that, that, I mean, yeah of course it, no one had ever seen anything like Twin Peaks I'm not too sure how big Twin Peaks was in the UK my parents certainly didn't watch it because I don't think it would have been their thing but no, really neither, neither my parents because I, I got to Twin Peaks very very late it was just a friend of mine got, yeah. got the box set when it had been re-released and we just watched the first episode got hooked that was it watched the full series and then got hooked in everything David Lynch did. I yeah. just wanted that's we we again we've discussed this. But this is one of the first times where instead of being a fan of an actor or just a film, I have become a, a fan of a director. Yeah. Because his work is so unique and. Yeah, and, and you know that everything that you're going to see is 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 untried territory. Mm. You know he's not he's not going to just settle for the the mundane or the normal. And so many things that 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 he's done have been mimicked and influenced it's not the other way around he does not mimic he does not uh, take influences I don't think I, anything that he does is parodied or influenced from anything else I think everything no. is such a unique take yeah. on, on it uh, to, again to go to the how much Twin Peaks has influenced popular culture yes. I was watching I sent you this video didn't I I was watching Scooby Doo a very new incarnation of Scooby Doo with my daughter right yes and um it, they, go, they go into like a dream sequence they walk through and next thing they're in the, the red room yeah uh, and this is a child child's this yeah. is for children right yeah this is for children it's not like the Simpsons where they're very obviously parodying that. yeah yeah no, this, this is just, just them oh it's fantastic that yeah, yeah. brilliant oh, I love it because kids won't get it and their parents will just suddenly sit up and go well, wait a second I know that room yeah so we've all been there before because the, the film is so open to being interpreted in so many ways that red room where would you say that is or what is it to me it's it's in the head it's definitely uh, you think it's in the head it's in the hippocampus <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's that place where we all go when we are um... because they do start to go more along the, the spiritual more like a cult vibe yeah. So I, I I don't know I think this place is um, where Bob sort of dwells, if you will. Oh, so it's like um, 
it's another place it's just another place it doesn't yeah. it's dimensionally really yeah it's it's not it's not something that it's not like it's in the back of a warehouse just down the road outside of Twin Peaks it's mm. actually a place where he goes tangibly that's not in the head it's not it's actually just another place yeah because um, it, it's not yeah because at, at the end <laughs> after um, and I want to talk about just previous to this in a bit but um, at the end of it where um, Leyland goes to this other place mm -hmm. and they got Bob next to him and um, I can't exactly remember the exact words but the um, the guy from another place the man from another place says like you need to take his pain and memory or grief away from him now do you remember that and he puts his st he's, Bob puts his hand on Leyland's stomach who's literally floating at this point and then just puts his hand to the floor and all this blood flies out because obviously when you start to win peaks Leyland is, doesn't even know his daughter's dead that makes sense mm. yeah cause I, I, it's an unravelling that he experiences throughout the whole series and that's why his behaviour is so erratic yeah just close that yeah, that's yeah. buzzing like a son of a gun is it we're actually in the um, in the uh, interim studio at the moment so we're uh, we're in a very active room yeah which is fine Steve, Stephen's laptop decided to come off standby and his fan went crazy. Yeah, so we can deal with that, can't we? We don't mind the little interruptions. It's not as if the garbage guys are coming by. Oh, hang on. <laughs> can you hear that? Oh. Oh, man, guys, it's not even Tuesday. I'm going to... If you hadn't have mentioned it, well, the garbage guys have turned up. No. Mm. <laughs> because that's what we do here. <laughs> we 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 do this to ourselves. Um, yeah. Um, Am I paraphrasing the Matrix there? What's really going to do you noodle in is would you have knocked it over if I hadn't mentioned it? <laughs> oh boy. Oh god. Um, dear me. Yeah, I know. So, what else can we pull out of this film? I mean, it's a it is a great film. I enjoyed it, and I, I think I need. It's the kind of film you need to watch more than once, I think, because yeah. Well, I watched it again uh, last week, and you saw yeah, it's so many layers. One of the reasons I like it so much Ooh, is um, okay. when I first watched it, it's the effect it had on me. Now, we, we I think we need to discuss about the soundtrack and the way sound is used in this, and um, yes, when it gets to the point where they're in the train carriage at the end. And um, all hell's breaking loose. Isn't there an angel? That's what I'm getting to. Yeah. So um, the sound's going all mad, and Leyland holds the, the ripped out pages of Laura's uh, diary. diary. And I thought, mm. I, I thought you always knew it was me. And she's crying her eyes, and it's got that 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 great camera shot just up at her face, and she's crying. She's looking around, and then the other girl's knocked out, and then oh, she's not knocked out. No, she's just sort of like she's sort of coming to and it's really loud then all of a sudden she looks up and it goes deadly quiet and there's that's that angel just floating there over um the other the other girl mm -hmm. that had such an effect on me because it was so loud and violent and disturbing Suddenly. and then it's just quiet and you got like in the angel of mercy and it's, it's just over and i was like Poof. and laura's looking over and i sort of know that she's going to make it out and she, but she's not going to, you know, Laura's not going to make it. And it's just, oh, I don't know, it had such an effect on me. That change between being so loud to just silence and just, yeah. just that angel floating over. Oh, amazing. Wow. Absolutely amazing. That's, that's just, yeah. I get chills just thinking about it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. that just that one scene had really effect on me. There's so much going on. There's different dimensions. There's um, David Bowie's in it. <laughs> that was David, weird. That was weird. But it I'm works not... though, because of what, because mm. uh, this sort of meandering stuff that he's saying, it seems it doesn't make any sense. He's coming from the other place. He's sort of like, I'm pretty sure that other place is definitely a, another dimension somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Because where he's talking, he's talking like he's still there, and he's just appeared and disappears. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And it's temporal like, sort of, uh, yeah. But yeah. That, that, that's definitely not in the head. That's that's something that's physical. Mm. Yeah, I see what you mean. That's separate to the room, I think. Though, I think the room is that. Dark it's the lodge, place. isn't it? The lodge. The yeah. Lodges, yeah. I think because that, that's where Cooper ends up at the end of series two, is in the lodge, and I think that lodge is the other place. Oh yeah. god, because there's so much. 
yeah, there, there is so much, yeah, and I think I think so. And then um, the, the the show, I absolutely love the the moment where he gets shot. Cooper gets shot in the lodge halfway through at the end of season one, I think. Yeah, because the <laughs> it's an amazing scene because he's lying there and yeah. he's trying to talk to Diane. Uh, he's, he, I think he get, has his recorder on him. Yeah, and, he, and but then the, um, uh, the I, I want to call him a maitre d. Yeah, because that's the beginning of series two. Yeah, and he that's he it. walks in and he sees him on the floor. He says, and he just he just doesn't get that he's been shot. That he actually <laughs> needs medical attention. He's like just wanders <laughs> out. And then he comes back in, and it's like you know I, I love that. I love that every everything has just got a, a twist on it that you just don't expect. Yeah. And I th- that's why you need to watch it more than once. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The, the films that you, they, they should be studied. Yeah, they should be, and yeah. and I think that there may be um, raising awareness of them helps um, get people involved and in, into watching it again. And because then there seems to be a bit of a, an audience missing out on it. I mean, if you're not aware of Twin Peaks, I mean, I wouldn't have been aware of Twin Peaks again if you hadn't have actually reintroduced it to me. Right. I knew it existed, but I never really cared to get into it right. until you kind of woke me up again and I was like, yeah, okay, I'm in, I'm in, yeah. I'm done. Um, and everything about David Lynch has, has suddenly been, kind of been reinserted into my brain, even though I'd already gone through Lost Highway I've already tried um, uh, Blue Velvet and I, I went through Dune. Um, not to say that Dune is actually, that's not really a reflection on yeah. him as an artist. Do you know that Kermode was punched in the face after giving a bad review to Blue Velvet? Really? In the corner house in Manchester. He didn't get it first time he watched it. And um, he, I'm pretty sure he said he was in the corner house in Manchester. Some guy came up and goes, Are you Mark Kermode who reviewed Blue Velvet? He's like, Yeah, yeah. And he punched him in the face. Wow, that's that's fans of David Lynch. That's how passionate they feel about his, his work. Well, you know, but yeah, but it's subsequently that just a to that, cook. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah, yeah, you don't do that, but you don't. Yeah. But he, but <laughs> now you know, Mark Kermode has gone back and watched it, gets it now, and uh, you know, sees it for the masterpiece it is. Yeah, shows you because uh, you know all, all the critics at the time hated Fire Walk with me, but now it's a cult classic, and it very rarely gets bad reviews if anyone goes back and has a retrospective on it I tend to think that David Lynch um, he doesn't go out of his way to um, to bring people in to watch his stuff Mm. he goes out the way of of getting his stuff out the way he needs it to look he doesn't I mean Blue Velvet to me doesn't look like I mean the the sound of the title doesn't sound appealing to me Mm. the front cover of of it Blue Velvet you know the title the sound you, know, the, uh, you automatically start thinking about the song and it kind of feels a little bit like um, something that you don't necessarily want to watch it's like a it's like a plain dust jacket r- that hasn't got mm. any anything appealing to mass market David Lynch doesn't want that mass market appeal on his products he wants it to look like exactly how it needs to look and that's it because to me I mean I never w- thought about watching R- Blue Velvet mm. it was only until I actually saw the scene with the ear yeah. on the ground Carl McCockham picks it, up, picks it up that and I knew it was because it was actually in a film book and I had to watch it then because it was referential I think a, a it's lot, not something I won't go to I won't go to it to watch it yeah I unless, think a lot of Lynch's work it it, 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 it has that because like mm. like Lost Highway for instance I wouldn't watch it over other films it's a masterpiece and I love that film but I know once I've watched that film my day's done Twin Peaks Fire Walk Me wiped me out for a day mm. because it, and Blue Velvet does it's not a film you can just watch for a bit of a bit of a laugh you know what I mean his work requires so much of yourself to be invested in it that it, for me anyway personally yeah. I'm out for the day and that's the power of his work that is it and if you don't get that if you're not it's not about face value He. What I'm, I think what I'm trying to say is that he doesn't get you excited about glamour and front covers and, and things like that. He's all about content. He's all yes. about the subject and the content. It doesn't matter um, whether whether it's got posters up for it or anything. He just wants you to see the film. Mm. He doesn't want you to see advertising. He wants you to see the film. I think a lot of the time it's, it's about exposing what's behind that glamour. 
Yeah. I think that's a lot that's of it. Lynch's purpose. Yeah, and, it, and it's stripping it back and just... It, you know, Mulholland Drive was about that, wasn't it? Mulholland, yeah, yeah. That was... Uh, that's quite an intense one, that one. Yeah, that's another film which... if That Twin Peaks by Walt Me and Mulholland Drive, the first time I watched both of those films, I don't think I spoke for about two hours afterwards. I watched Mulholland Drive in the corner house, funnily enough, in Manchester. Uh, with my friend and we just went our separate ways and I just went back to my apartment and just sat there in the dark like just Whoa. thinking about it yeah, that, yeah. I, I don't, I'm trying to think of the films that have done that to me and, and funnily enough one of the films that actually got me a hook line and sinker was um, Arlington Road oh yeah with Tim, Tim Robbins. Robbins Joan Cusack and um, like was it Jeff Bridges yeah, I think Jeff Bridges. It's that movie has it's got Lynch's paw prints all over it. It's not mm. a Lynch film. In fact, I'm going to have to now open it up to find out who. Oh, so let's. Whoa, the vacuum cleaner has just switched on. <laughs> yeah. But it's not a vacuum cleaner. It's an actual vacuum. We're, we're recording this inside of a vacuum. Inside, yeah, we're actually inside a vacuum chamber, and uh, we're waiting for. Uh, between space and time, we're in the other place. We're in the oh, okay. We're in the other place. Arlington Road, directed by a Mark, Mark Pellington. Pellington. He did the Mothman Prof prophecies. I didn't mind that. That was okay. Yeah, there we go. Henry Paul is here. Really? Oh, it's got Cheryl Hines in it, so it's more like a comedy, I think. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's. I, I kind of imagined that he would be the next best thing to David Lynch when I looked at Arlington Road it really knocked me out but recently he's directed a Lincoln Park video really? yep oh Rear Window the t oh, Red sorry Red Widow sorry that's like <laughs> no way Joan Cusack is not a terrifying person but this director it, really has made it, made that work made that happen I mean, are there any other films like that? films that have just knocked me out knocked me for six Pan's Labyrinth that did uh, had the that same effect on me. That affected me too. Um, yeah. Not by what, but by the way that you think it was actually the um, the pounding somebody's face in with a with a oh, flashlight. The, yeah. That stayed with me more than everything. Because that because the, the camera does not shy away. It no. just you see every punch and it's that's hard going. That was really that really. Uh, I mean, I, I've I, violence I can handle, but when it's so perfectly brutal and real yeah. and painful and frightening it's the same with uh, in Casino when they're beating uh, beating all the guys at the end with, with steel poles yeah baseball bats and the head in the vice part which eye pops out the eye pops out <laughs> that, I mean that kind of violence that those violent images stay with me yeah. those little moments of like oh my god I can't believe they just did that mm. um, but with Pan's Labyrinth that moment was oh yeah no it is that's hard going that hard yeah but I, I, this is the beauty of Pan's Labyrinth. I, I honestly think you could watch the watch Pan's Labyrinth. You could pause it, keep your eyes closed, silence, and then pause at any point in that film. And you could just take that off the screen and hang it on your wall. That's quite. That's quite true. That film is stunningly beautiful. Even when they're eating a sandwich, <laughs> it's just um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she, she does eat a sandwich. She takes a sandwich to a moment. Yeah, yeah. I think it was something. Yeah, something to do with food. But it's just so full but of great ideas. I'd hang that on my wall. Good old sandwich. Yeah, he knows what he's doing with a sandwich. Go, the old El Toro does. Yeah, yeah. but uh, then there's the Fountain, another subversive film. Yeah, that stayed in my head for a while. Did it? That that, that lingered. Do you think, like, it had such a profound effect on me because I was invested in the characters, mm -hmm. and because I loved the TV show so much? Do you think if someone just went to the film without really knowing anything about the TV show, do you think it could have the same effect on that person? So if they just watch the film without the TV Just show. the film, yeah. Someone's told them it's a great film, watch it. Uh, quite possibly. So, yeah. I suppose if they, if they let the film affect them, get into them. Let it breathe, yeah. yeah. And, and in a way it could be more surprising because you don't know what's going to go on. You know what's going to happen. I think if you've got that predetermined idea of yeah. character destination and, of, and the actual overall story that's ahead yeah. you put all it is about is putting pieces together now that could have been really bad because it, like any prequel as you well know um, 
having the knowledge previous that Darth Vader is going to be this kid. Yeah. Eventually, and all that with with, with, with Fire Walk with me, you don't think that much ahead. You think in the moment a lot of it. You, you don't. Do. Yeah. You don't really go ahead and think. Oh well. I think the only thing I looked at was oh that their hair is is short just like it was at the beginning of Twin Peaks oh well that makes sense because yeah. it's longer later uh, they changed their appearance oh she's got two eyes she doesn't have a patch on yeah. isn't she in it patch lady yeah she is a... not oh hang on no 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 I don't think she is in it she's not in it no. scratch that okay uh... <laughs> how, how, how about yeah. the um, the sound design Obviously, the score was done by Angelo Badalamenti. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't quite get his last name. Yeah. <laughs> Say that again. Angelo Badalamenti. Yeah, it's, um, it's fantastic. I, um, I love the little the jazz score to it, a little swinging jazz. They, he does that a lot, and I've noticed that. It's all through Twin, the actual series as well. None of the actual themes were actually. Yeah, no, uh, the um, the very conscious decision. Yeah, the woman who sang the original theme for Twin Peaks is in it, but she sings a different. It's a different song, but I think it's better. It's even better than the Twin Peaks theme. And has that great yeah. moment where Laura's watching her sing this haunting song. She just burst into tears. Yeah, you know, that's it. Yeah, I so remember that. that film, I mean. But I love that yeah. scene when they're in the club, and the music's louder than what they're saying you can't make out what they're saying there's two versions of it <laughs> there's one that it's you've got the subtitles so you know exactly what they're saying and there's one without, the, without. and I prefer the one without I like the fact you don't you, it's like you're there with them and because the music's just driving blues yeah sort of rock yeah. blues track that it, it that affects you as well it, uh, you're right you're right and I, th I think that was very very it's, it, I think he covered his bases I think that's probably what, what David Lynch tends to do he, he tries something one way tries it another way yeah. keeps both figures it out in yeah, editing yeah. Um, he probably has a lot more material to edit than, uh, than the usual guy well yeah it. because they've recently released um, Twin Peaks the definitive whatever it's called but yeah. I think there's over two hours of stuff that was quite out of Fire Walk with me, which I have yet to see. I'm sure I'm going to be seeing very shortly. Well, that that will be quite a, an experience for you. I yeah. hope it doesn't spoil the experience completely. No, I don't think it will. Could. Yeah, could. How could it? I mean, if <laughs> I still have that film, it's one of my favourite films. Exactly. But again, if uh, there are better films, but the reason it's one of my favourite films is purely because of the that personal that effect it had on me the first time. Because the first time I watched the film, it was on a grainy VHS tape. Yeah, yeah. And just that one scene, just the. That the angel scene was just it's so profound and one of my favorite films is the player and it's purely because it, and it's not a film that everybody likes um but it's a film that i go to yeah. i can watch quite a few times over and it's 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 got corny moments but it's designed that way it's specific for that intention intent and but the, the whole storyline of a producer murdering a writer I just found it exciting yeah and it's not everybody's favourite everybody loves unfortunately yeah. but that, that's not that's not number one on my list and it no, never will be no. and it's the, it's the films that that um that kind of the st they get missed mm. that that fascinate me the films that kind of fall between the cracks is that why you still not watch Guardians of the Galaxy? Um, that's not falling between the cracks. <laughs> that's that's a gap filler, man. <laughs> that's, 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 it's in my way because I can't see the good films that are hanging I mean, with the cracks. I do, I do, I do want to watch it now. Good. I do want to watch it. I have seen, um, I have seen the trailer. Right. I did watch the trailer. I'm interested. There's a lot of Star Trek elements in there. It's just it's a it's a space opera. It's fantastic. It's so good. Is it like? It's one of my favorite films. Is it like? Is it like <laughs> Galaxy Quest? No, nothing like that. It's not a parody at all. Not a parody. No, it's um, it's done with conviction. Um, Tongue in cheek conviction. It's you have to watch it. It's um, I, yeah. Lots of people said it's weird. I don't think it's weird at all. No, but, but it's, weird, uh, weird is a, is one of those things that that separates you liking. Uh, Firewalk with me and, and they like Transformers I mean come on yeah when people say weird these days it's big it's, it's simply because it's not mass market yeah mass mass market but yeah mass I think, market because everyone thought the Guardians was a big gamble for Marvel because no one had heard who they were and you've got a talking raccoon and a tree that says three words in it 
Yeah. And then all the tree can say is, I am Groot. That's it. Well, there's actually four words, and we're going to spoil that for you. <laughs> and, um, but you end up caring about them. You get choked up. Really? Like, there's one part in it. I got a lump <laughs> in my throat. I'm, I'm not afraid to admit that. Oh, dear. That. Oh, dear. I don't think I can handle that. It's, it's, it's great. But, yeah, I mean, I, I'm always drawn to films that are... Um, that, that not everybody talks about. Mm. And I think it's because they're out there and they've got a message and, and they're getting missed and, it, and if, if people pan them it's even more interesting for me to watch them I want to go and watch that yeah because then I'm it's like The Room is probably one of the most critically panned films of all times but it has elevated itself to a status where people want to see it more than once because it's then they want other people to see it as well because it is so ridiculously it's one of those films that you you can't understand that it was made. You, you cannot believe that somebody actually invested their time in making it. But then you have to then you start thinking about: was it done intentionally? Is this is the joke on us? I mean, have we really? Uh, and, and some films are like that. That's why I do go to the ones that are um, that people kind of say I don't like it. I didn't get yeah. it. Like like the, yeah. the filmmakers that made Birdemic. Yes. Yeah. Are, are they sitting at home? With a huge bank account, laughing their asses off because people sit through their film, and they've made it intentionally awful, and they're just laughing at the fact that people are watching this and it's awful, it's terrible, and they're still watching it. Yeah, I think there's Birdemic too. There, I, I think there too. is. Yeah, but, <laughs> and I think that their their skills and, and technical knowledge of film is probably a, a high above what was actually created. Yeah, they did it intentionally because. There is there is a lot more competence in there than than that of a uh, of uh, th those many of those films that you see on Best of the Worst with Red Letter Media yeah. uh, when they're doing um, it, it is there is a competency to it but at the same time it's delivered in a in a very incompetent way I, I mean you can't fake inco incompetence you can't fake it no um, it makes me think of Garth Marenghi's Dark Place yes it does um, you know it's like it, you watch it it's terrible but it's it's done so brilliantly because it is trying to, it's, it, the, the, there's a difference between trying to make it look awful they're actually succeeding yeah I think so I, many people I, try I, yeah I'd say Gar Dark Place is one of the things that's done it the best remember the very first episode of it when she's walking down the hall and they just see two hands chuck a cat in <laughs> <laughs> I was hooked I thought it? yes I'm going to like this I this was hooked that's, but you can't fake that you can't just um, yeah, you can't accidentally do that. You've got to do it with intent, and I yeah. think that's why those films are far more interesting than any film that that Bruce Willis could ever be in. Yeah, including The Sixth Sense. Yeah, did you guess in Sixth Sense? About halfway through, I thought he's dead. It's, yeah, it's, if if you're watching the film and you're conscious of it, and you're questioning it, then yeah. But I don't think I was actually in into questioning it. You just, I just you watched were that. It. Yeah, you just weren't Should interested, really. Just watched it, and it was okay. It was good. It's a good film, and uh, I think I think I was watching it for the kid more than anything because he of his performance, and I mm. kind of just ignored Bruce Willis most of the time. He wasn't that uh, interesting a character. Yeah, I think more people was, should ignore Bruce Willis. I think he was just a little bit dead. I should have realised that. You know, maybe that that assumption. But no, no, no. I mean, Bruce Bruce Willis is fine. I I just can't, I, I've talked about this before. I don't know if I've touched about it on this podcast. But actors, to to me, kind of have uh, work better with the fear. Yeah. The fear directors is. Directors do as well. And directors too. They direct better when they don't have any money. Mm. When they don't have anything. Um, the exception to that would be Francis Ford Coppola's Tetra, which he he did later on in his in his years. He wanted to do it as a personal project, and he but he had the money. He, he, you know, he's he's not afraid to say that he actually stripped his budget down for a purpose because he wanted to have that fear again. Yeah. And thank goodness he did because that is a, a sensational film, and uh, very very unknown film as well. But so many actors come to film now and they have this swagger this this arrogance and they don't know what to do with it anymore they know that they're going to get paid they know that they're going to be liked they know they're going to be signed up to sequels they don't care there's no fear fear in a performance is a big deal for me and I like to yeah. see yeah psychologically Freeman. what must it do to a person that you know that 
eighty percent of the people come and watch this film and come to watch it just because you were in it. Psychologically, do what you feel? Do, you? do you feel as though you want to put your best performance on? I mean, surely, yeah. There are there are moments where you kind of get into it, but you they don't have to get into it. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I mean, Brad Pitt in World War Z or X or T. Z. Z. Um, oh, he, he didn't. Too British. He didn't need to. Oh yeah, yeah. He didn't <laughs> need to. Uh, he didn't need to act his socks off in that film. He didn't have to do a lot. He didn't have to. He didn't come across as doing anything uh, uh, unbelievable or different. No. But in Seven, there's a little fear there. There's yeah, still there's some fear there. And the same with Jodie Foster. I mean, you know, when she did The Brave One. Mm. Uh, I don't know if you've seen that. No, I've not seen that. It's it's basically her falling in love with the role of the taxi driver again, and do it. And but she is that she is the Robert De Niro of that movie. She's the one who's going on her crusade. Wow, that sounds so that, and that that was that was a fascinating project for her to go on, even though she didn't have to have the fear, but she did. She found it again in that film, and she really found her. Um, but but Jodie Foster's always always been a, an actress who is more into her roles than say, um, uh, let's 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 think let's think of some overblown people. Meg, who, Meg Ryan. Yeah, well, yeah, Meg Ryan. Fear. What's she afraid of? Um, Apart from Michael Parkinson and plastic surgery. Um, <laughs> I mean, to, to a certain extent, Amy Adams still still delivers. Role, yeah, uh, yeah, in Adams does, yeah. But I, I think that's one of that's one of the tests that I like to look at. I like to look at actors and actresses, uh, and directors, of course, and maybe writers. You know, are they writing with fear? I mean, I mean, David Lynch uh, seems to never get rid of that fear when he's. I mean, I, um, I, I don't think he's the kind of person who even cares about being comfortable in filmmaking he wants to yeah feel he's not, he wouldn't make a film edgy. hoping for good reviews he just make he has a vision in his head and he has a, a the unique ability yeah. to put whatever's in his head on the screen people don't get on with it he's not he doesn't he's not bothered us not what he's it, about exactly and then with with um main actors, he's the opposite though isn't he yeah he, is he doesn't opposite. have any fear he doesn't care maybe there isn't there maybe that's beyond fear yeah but yeah, it, it, you can go two ways. You can either be arrogant and just say, "Well, I'm I'm Brad Pitt. I can do whatever." Yeah. Or I'm you know who I'm Zac Efron. I don't even have to try. Yeah. Um, I just have to be there, or you know. But uh, I'm I'm tailgating a lot of, uh, of of Hollywood celebrities here that that I kind of just think that they need to do something with themselves. Mm. To I mean I, I'm I'm starting to notice now that Jonah Hill. Is starting to kind of just sit back and just let 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 things just go with the scene and not really be. Well, you got an Oscar nod, didn't they? Yeah, you got nominated for Oscar for the Wolf of Wall Street, was it? I think. It I was. think so. Which. So now, does that make you just well? I've worked with Scorsese now. I've made it. That's it. That, I see that a lot when I'm watching films, and the the, the main actress in Fire Walk with Me, I've forgotten Lee. her name, Cheryl Lee. Um, she. She had fear in that film. She had fear in that film. Wow. And um, what, so what I'm, I'm not saying that she is very good at being afraid on camera. I'm saying that she's acting as if she's never going to get an acting job again. Mm. That there is the fear is the fear is not of not working. So and and I think that that's something that I I look at and I see. Yeah, could could go from that that model Naomi Watts. Have a the, the yeah. way she is in Mulholland Drive to the way she acts now. Yeah, it's different. The it's very different. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She would never pick to do Mulholland Drive now. No, because it's too much work and too much fear. Yeah, too much. Yeah, and uh, uh, that, that's it. That's pretty much the bottom line of that test. You yeah, know, and I think that we'll be looking for that. We're looking. We're look, looking for the fear. We're looking for the fear. What else? I mean, during the Alien, um, um, we're, we're looking at the Bechtel Bechtel test. I can still never get that word. Yeah, I think it's Bechtel. Test. test. That's the other thing that we look for. Yeah, the fire wall when we did not pass it. It didn't pass. That's, no. Right. Okay, so. But um, I will let it pass. Well, that's about <laughs> that I'm is about all. relationships. Yeah, of course. So you can't have you can't have Twin Peaks without two girls talking about a guy. Yeah, and you know, and she's and vice versa. Right? Exactly, okay. and she's you know obviously because Cheryl Lee, you know, Laura Palmer is. Uh, she's she's been abused all her life, so she's on drugs and she's sleeping around with men and she's selling her body for money as well you know yeah. so it, it's yeah 
she's going to be talking about men at some point in the film. The ear free. The scare is delivered on the ear free. Does that yes, happen? It does when she's seeing, um, I think, it's a psychiatrist. That she goes talking, there's another person who's madly in love with her. And um, she's all upset and don't touch me. Don't touch me. And then her, bo- her face changes. She has like yellow teeth and black yes, lips. That's right, yeah. That's I've on the that. year three. I've seen that, yeah. That, that and is. you don't expect that. And you're like, whoa, wait, you get on now. Yeah. <laughs> all of a sudden. And I think that that's something that you don't expect from Lynch to. Again, it's an unexpected. Yeah, because you don't think a jump scare is not something you'd expect no, a that, director a, of Lynch's car- calibre to do, but he does it in Mulholland Drive as well. But that was that was the um, the Bil- Bilbo Baggins um, in yeah. Fellowship of the Ring. <laughs> yeah. Having the ring, it was that. that was, That's Lynch's that was, influence. Peter yeah, Jackson stole off that. Yeah, it got to be because that, that is, <laughs> that is exactly how it goes. It's the same thing. You don't it's expect it. Yeah, the E of the Free. Uh, so that, that's in there. Yeah, that's frame by frame. That's our thing. Yeah, you can't have it. Yeah, and oh, also <laughs> twenty yeah. people will listen to this. <laughs> and, and acting with fear, the fear. Yes, uh, and, and I think that those are the things that we're always going to bring up in every single review that we do. Um, so, are we giving two thumbs up, just like Siskel and Ebert? Yes. Can you see our thumbs, people? You see now, I, I think that's an outdated term because you, you know, two thumbs up sounds like we're. Right. Yeah, because it's it's radio as well. It doesn't quite work. No, it doesn't. But I think it works because it doesn't work. That's all. I get all that. There you go. Because it doesn't work. It we works. will use it. Yeah. We will use it. But I urge anyone to please watch that film. Yes. Um, let it let it get inside you. That's weird. <laughs> that's like how, yeah, two thumbs up. <laughs> Take the two it, thumbs up. Does it go inside you? Yeah. It doesn't matter where you put the thumbs. It's just yeah. <laughs> crazy talk um, but yeah fire walk with me it, it, it is worth the experience it's worth the ride and try Twin Peaks absolutely well. yeah really Give get involved go. with it and um, and all we'll discuss it in great depth in great depth but all Lynch's work it's worth getting into anything from the Elephant Man into like Eraserhead and Mulholland Drive and I haven't seen Elephant Man do I need to leave now yes there's the door goodbye Shall I close it behind me? Yes, don't let it hit you. One day my log will have something to say about this. Liquid storage bags! You will never get caught short again thanks to... Liquid storage bags! Here you get eight, that's right, eight bags in which you can store your very own liquid items. Bags on sold separately, liquid not included. The attractive cardboard box is easy to open. With each wonderfully transparent, durable and easily accessible. Ready Ready to to go! go. That's right, when you've got to go, liquid storage bags are there for you. Liquid storage bags? That's right! Liquid Liquid storage storage bags! They're sleek, sturdy, and stylish. And what's more, you can write all the information you need right there on the bag, where the space is provided. Warning, do not write on liquid storage bags. Liquid storage bags cannot be found in any store, by phone, or online. So you know that liquid storage bags are the product for you. And And only you! What's it called? Liquid storage bags! Ah, yeah! Liquid storage bags!